Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications, NAB Live 2023 here with Jeff Fiorino of Diplex and Phonak. Hi, Nick. How are you, Jeff? Very good. good. Thank you. Thanks for being here. It's nice to see you as always. Thank you. Haircut as looks you. on point. So does this jacket. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I can't be the only one I who has I bedazzled come. every <laughs> single one myself. Um, so uh, I should mention we're live, streaming live on uh, Facebook and YouTube. And so if anybody has any questions or comments for Jeff and Phonak, uh, please put them on the comments section and we will get back to you uh, towards the end. Great. So Jeff, um, back in NAB 2023, what do you have? What are you talking about? What have you found that's interesting in the last year or so? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we're not releasing any new equipment to talk about, but mm -hmm. still mainly just talk about different ways in which people get around distance with our product. I mean, I think it's pretty self. Uh, it's it's pretty safe to say that our our Roger earpiece has been very well accepted over the last four years mm -hmm. since our original launch in 2016. The audio is fantastic. It's so easy to work with. Yeah. It's only about 11 milliseconds of of latency, which is essentially non-existent. Um, you know, just working with it in general, just bringing it close, tapping it. There's no more toasting or anything like that. So mm -hmm. overall. When people and when talent especially hear the Roger, I think they're sold on it kind yeah. of right away. Um, and still just the fact that it's just the earpiece that the talent has to yeah. wear. That's all it is. So, yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, different ways in which we're, you know, typical line of, clear line of sight distance just between a transmitter and the earpiece. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about 30 to 90 feet. Uh, but there are ways to extend that and mm -hmm. ways in which mixers have come up with wa creative ways to mm -hmm. do that. Um, first being repeater, yes, you can just sort of keep adding repeaters to daisy chain, essentially yeah. a coverage area with it. I would say that's actually probably our least common mm -hmm. way of increasing the range these days. Um, a that really, does add latency, right? It, it adds two milliseconds of latency, okay. so not huge, but mm -hmm. I would say it's more so about cost. And mm -hmm. so I wouldn't recommend the repeater in a scenario where we're trying to get really large distances and mm -hmm. trying to just add, you know, five to 10 repeaters right. per. Mm -hmm. I'd like to use the repeater in situations where you just need that little extra coverage yeah. or potentially if um, putting the repeater on a talent or very mm -hmm. close to a talent. And that reason is simply because the receive antenna inside the earpiece is inside there. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not as large of a receive right. antenna. So the distance from a transmitter to the earpiece is actually less than say the transmitter to the repeater. Mm -hmm. So if we can at least get one repeater close to the talent, if not worn by the talent, mm -hmm. um, that's where I see the repeater as, as helpful. Right, so it literally could go just right exactly. in my pocket. And, and you've sort of instantly gained, um, you know, probably at least 20 feet mm -hmm. instead of not having that in the equation with right. just the earpiece in mm -hmm. your ear. And the so antenna in this is going to be better. Yeah, the it, exactly. The it's a, it's a full area around it. Mm -hmm. So so that's where I see the ro the repeater being used, not so mm -hmm. much as far as trying to get this large distance. Yep. Um, when we're talking about, you know, getting to large distances or um, say different areas, mm. a common way to do it now is is cloning. And so each Roger uh, transmitter has its own network ID. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we actually extract that Roger network ID from one and put it into another. Uh -huh. And so what that allows us to do is, you know, in Studio A, we have one wired feed uh, to one base station, mm -hmm. green room, we have another, and then we have, say, control room where we may need coverage in all three areas. Mm -hmm. If they're already wired into those areas, mm -hmm. if you clone the base stations, when the talent walks from area one to two to three, it's simply clicking over to the stronger transmitting area. So the cloning solution has really been uh, used quite a bit in recent mm -hmm. years. Um, Another one that we really like and, and becoming more and more common. Can I stop you for a yeah, second? Yeah, absolutely. I, Jump right uh, in. How do you clone a Good base question. station? So it's just a, a freely downloadable software mm -hmm. off of our website. Um, it's very e easy to use. Mm -hmm. Essentially two buttons. Mm -hmm. One is extract, one is okay. put in. So, it, so it's just the USB on the back. Exactly. You're, you're plugging in mm -hmm. the transmitter. It can be done with all of our transmitter options, okay. Roger Touchscreen, Roger uh, Multimedia Hub, um, and then you're simply just plugging in the next one and putting it into that mm. one, that network okay. ID, so yeah. 
Good question. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So sorry, you were on to next the next one. Um, you know this. So we, I mentioned, we have several um, transmitting devices. So mm -hmm. one, our most common is absolutely our base station. Right. You know, you have multiple input options on it. Um, you can rack it. I think that's why it's the most popular. Mm -hmm. It's you know, you're connected to a wall, or whatever, uh, to continuous power. Uh, but the other ones are a multimedia hub or a touchscreen mic, mm -hmm. and. I was going to jump into the, the multimedia hub because it's been a nice solution in creating distance because what we can do is it just has a simple 3.5 input in it mm -hmm. and you can connect it to an existing IFP system mm -hmm. that's on set. Here, let's see that so, 3.5. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking Electrosonics, Zaxcom, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. um, just simply get the audio out of that bell pack and mm -hmm. put it into here and then you're all of a sudden getting that coverage area of yep. that UHF frequency. Mm -hmm. So it's another nice one. It's also uh, cost effective as well because this is less expensive than, say, the base station. Yep. So I, I like it. It's a versatile yeah. way of doing it. So And it's battery powered, so you could literally p put it anywhere. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This can be run. You could plug this in for continuous power, mm -hmm. um, or otherwise it's about a 10-hour runtime on it. So, um, yeah, it, it, to me it's a very nice solution. Mm -hmm. It's been used recently by a couple major news networks, mm -hmm. um, and I really like that solution. Yeah. yeah. And we have seen people, because we were talking with somebody, um, Chris Welker, down in New Orleans, that was doing something very similar where he was taking Electro M2R, plugging into a base station, and then running both of them off of a large battery on a stand yeah. to get pretty great range. Yeah, I mean, it kind of would alleviate having to wire different um, areas within a studio that yeah. way, right? So then you're doing it wirelessly through the existing IFB. So. Mm -hmm. I really like that idea because then you're still tapping into the existing IFB, but then you could also then use the cloning technique where we just leave them in one area yeah. and clone it and put it in the other one mm -hmm. so that when the talent goes from area one to two mm -hmm. to three, it's simply clicking over again to that stronger transmitting signal. And because it's digital, when, when it cuts out, it's not like it's the, you just hear a nice pleasant beep. Yes. Yeah. Like a very It's low. a very soft mm -hmm. beep to let you know that you're out of the distance and that if there was a transmission, you wouldn't be hearing it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, again, the, the Roger earpiece is so much clearer mm -hmm. just from an actual speech intelligibility uh, standpoint mm -hmm. um, that we find that people, especially compared to our, our older Invisity system, you don't need to turn it up as loud because it's that much more clear mm. and it's far less fatiguing on a talent's ear in general because there's no white noise, there's no interference at all in the Rogers system. So again, when a talent gets this in their hand or in their ear, mm -hmm. it's absolutely, they, they say, get me this again. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Great. Um, all right, well, let's Let's to questions from the internet. Uh, any questions or comments? Uh, Kendra. Yes, we have uh, one question from YouTube asking uh, about the frequency range, um, uh, about the fact that it's at that 2.4 gigahertz frequency range. And uh, will is there any chance that we'll ever see Phonak get back to that UHF spectrum? No, so the, uh, so just to quickly clarify, the original Invisity was in the VHF, uh, so it was 158 to 220, with the most typical one being 214 to 220. No, I mean the you know you've probably heard me like a broken record on this, but unfortunately, no, it's not going to come back. Major reason is simply the the chipset of that mm -hmm. is no longer existing, and we cannot get that physical minerals essentially mm. for that, that board is what I'm told. So, Interesting. so it's not coming back, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Everything has gone digital on the hearing aid side, which is obviously us, you know, being a hearing aid company, mm -hmm. we use that technology. Um, and so to answer your question about the 2.4, the, the one thing I always like to point out to people is that this is not Bluetooth. This is not just 2.4. Mm -hmm. It is a proprietary protocol that um, Phonak spent a hundred million dollars on, on the medical side to come up with this very small chipset to be mm -hmm. able to communicate um, between the two chips. Mm. And so what we're doing is it's actually uh, frequency hopping between 2.41 and 2.48. Mm -hmm. And it's hopping within the channels within that range. And the earpiece, or receiver in this case, is actually sending data back to the transmitter to say, stay away from this occupied channel because mm. the audio is not getting there. Mm -hmm. And so obviously this is all happening in live time, Very 11 fast. millisecond yeah. uh -huh. time, um, to, to basically stay away from occupied channels. Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to try again 
at 2.41 blank, yeah. it's going to avoid that because it's sending three packets of audio at every stream. So mm-hmm. it's actually going to know which one it actually successfully got to. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's much more complicated than just Bluetooth itself. Uh-huh. And it is proprietary and different than Bluetooth. Mm. Yeah. Got it. Great question. Um, any other questions or comments, Kendra? That's the only question from online. All right. That's what we got. Jeff, is there anything else that you want to share? Any fun Vegas anecdotes? No. Are you planning on getting um, you know, lost in Las Vegas? Or what's the other <laughs> one? The hangover? No. I've, I've been good. And I stay on East Coast time when okay. I come here. So my mornings are early. Have a workout. Have some breakfast. And then come here. And then, yeah dead tired after after the show someone to look up to (laughs) all right awesome jeff thank you so much good seeing you good to see you and we'll see you in may for the gotham expo of course sweet okay great uh thank you so much for watching uh we've got at least one more uh show for today nab 2023 you'll see in a minute